this video actually just got really expensive. I, uh, I think I ruined my miter saw. Today we're going to be talking about portable power banks and specifically we're going to be going over a few things on the EcoFlow River Pro. This is a fairly substantial uh, portable battery pack. These things are lithium ion based and are becoming more and more capable for the size that the units are. Now the one I'm looking at today, we actually have the extra battery which expands the runtime of the unit, but this thing has some pretty seriously impressive specs. So I'm going to give you a few reasons why you might want to consider looking into purchasing a portable power bank like this and then we're going to kind of do a few tests on this to see what this thing is capable of operating. You can see I've got a miter saw there, a couple of floodlights and a drill that we're going to be hooking up to this thing just to run them for a while. I also did a test where I ran my crock pot making a Sunday dinner. Let me give you a quick close up and an overview of what's on the front of this thing. So starting on this side we have our power input for our 120 volts and then also our power input for if we want to charge this thing with a car or with solar. So I don't have the solar panels with this thing but there are also solar uh, panels that are available for purchase that are compatible with this. Now on the front right here you can see we have a built-in light that has a couple of different modes, a couple of different brightnesses and then an SOS mode as well. Right here we have a 100 watt output USB-C port, which is pretty fantastic for those of you that run MacBooks. If you're going to use this thing uh, like uh, out on the road uh, for your mobile office or whatever, a 100 watt output on USB-C is pretty nice and will be more efficient than using your adapter uh, and the AC ports on the other side. I'm going to show you in a second. Right here we do have an on-off switch, which turns on and off our display. It's obviously really bright right now. We have the sun shining on this, so it's kind of hard to see probably on the camera, but this gives us all of our information on what's currently happening uh, with the unit, <clears throat> how much is uh, coming into the unit when, you, when you're charging it, as well as how much is going out. Uh, all of your load information is shown right there. You can see we have two regular USB ports and then a fast charge USB port. And then right here we have a 12 volt regular socket there, as well as a couple of 12 volt barrel plugs. Now on this end, this is where our uh, AC adapters are located, and this thing can output about 600 watts continuous. Now it can go over 600 watts under certain circumstances, and I think that comes down to like inrush load. Uh, sometimes it's referred to as where when you first start an appliance, it needs a little bit more power, and this thing can temporarily uh, go over that 600 watts, but anything over 600 watts continuous is going to trip it out. So we have three AC ports right there, which is very nice. And then down here we have our expansion port connection where that cord is going to go over and plug into your second unit should you decide to purchase the additional battery pack. And that's pretty much all there is to this one. And then as far as cords that they include, they include the car charger as well as your solar panel uh, adapter, I'm pretty sure is what that is. And then a 12 volt barrel plug and an AC power cord for getting this thing charged up. One other interesting thing that it's capable of is it has Wi-Fi built into it. And it has that for a couple different reasons. The first reason is this thing does need periodic updates or it could need an update. So if they want to be able to update the software on this guy, you can connect it to Wi-Fi and it will be able to get its updates that way. And the second reason is you can actually control and monitor what's happening with this unit with your phone. So you can turn things on and off as well as see how much power is being inputted or outputted from the unit from your phone remotely, which is really pretty sweet. All right, let's uh, test a few things and plug some stuff in and see uh, what we're able to run with this guy. Turn it on here. And on this side then we'll plug in to one of our AC outlet ports. Turn that on. And we can see right now we're drawing 292 watts and it says right now it'll last two hours at that current rate. Let's go ahead and add our expansion pack here and uh, see how long that will increase our runtime on this thing. Right here is where we connect that extension cable. The other end of the cable simply plugs into the top of the second unit here. And it looks like it automatically connected it. What do you think of this operation? Um, well, I hope it doesn't make us late for church. Right now we actually have it on the high setting, and even on high, right now it's showing us that it could run for another five hours at that 289 watts that that's currently drawing. So we could have 
a crock pot dinner out someplace in the woods in the blizzard and be able to still make a nice roast. We made it back from church and it's been a few hours. You can see we have two hours or a little probably between two and three hours left remaining at this current 287 watts. Uh, Naomi did have us run it on high. Yep, but now we can turn it to low. For the morning. So this is also how to make a roast, I guess. So now after it's been on high for a while, then you put it on low. So we're gonna switch that over to low. And now it's only outputting 140 watts. And it says that we have between four and five hours left. Let's take a look at the roast for fun. There it is, looks amazing. I technically assembled everything in there, so it's probably not going to be as good as when Naomi does it, but... Oh, that's not true. We'll as long as we follow Grandma's recipe and instructions. Well, I didn't follow Grandma's recipe. Do you not put the beef bouillon in? No. <gasps> Honey, she says that's the secret. I know, but don't. It's fine. I want to try it without it. Oh. <laughs> the roast is done, and the battery pack has had adequate time to cool off. That's important to note is that if you drain these batteries quickly, which actually the drain on this wasn't too uh, overly fast, but especially if it's close to that 600 watt maximum output, uh, you want to allow time for the unit to cool off. So it's about 10 till eight. So we'll go ahead and get this connected. And I think it'll start automatically, but we'll just see what it says here. Sure enough. So. It has started the charging process. You can see this uh, indicator light started over here too. You guys can now watch the clock here. Go ahead and plug it in. So we have our two 7,000 lumen lights plugged in, and right here on the display you can see that it's outputting 121 watts. It's kind of hard to see out here in the direct daylight, but that's how much these two lights are drawing. These things at 7,000 lumens are actually pretty substantial as far as the load they put on the unit. Obviously that's very reasonable though, and the other thing on that display is it tells us how long it should be able to run at that current load and right there you can see it says about 12 hours that this thing would be able to run these two 7,000 lumen lights uh, on a single charge. So that's pretty fantastic. If you had a work site or something else where you needed light and you didn't want to have to have a generator running all day long, uh, this is pretty great. Now let's say you had to use a drill as well. Uh, why don't you demonstrate the drill, Ole, over there. Go pick up the drill and, and uh, rev it up a couple times. <laughs> nice. We're going to try to watch the display here and see what those numbers do. So it's uh, fine with running this drill. Now if we were to put it under significant load, it's likely that it would eventually uh, trip out. But if you're just drilling holes, uh, you probably would be fine with running these two lights and a uh, drill like this. Now let's put it through the ultimate test, which is going to be that miter saw over there. The miter saw draws from the nameplate here. You can see that it's going to draw somewhere around 15 amps at 120 volts, 60 hertz. And I think the inrush current on this thing is too much for the unit. All right, here goes the miter saw. It definitely was a slower start than what I would typically see, but, oh, and the fan really kicked in. The fan is, was running really loud for just a moment there. Uh, let me grab a chunk of wood. All right, here we go. I've got a little chunk of uh, two by 10. It looks like that time it actually kicked it out. And uh, what we're gonna do this time is I'm gonna, I'm gonna reset it and then I'm going to uh, just squeeze the handle and then let it kind of spin up slowly, if that makes sense, so that we don't uh, overload it immediately. So I'm just going to press the AC power button again. And there it powered up. Maybe we'll turn off one of the lights uh, just to help us out a little bit.
right there I was going pretty easy on the saw uh, because I knew that the harder I push it down the more amps it would draw. So this time I'm going to go in like normal pace how I normally would and we'll see if it trips it out. Finally tripped it out after a few cuts uh, in a row without letting the saw kind of re-speed up again. Let's see if we can get a close-up of the amp uh, draw on the unit and see how many watts it's actually outputting before it kicks out. I held it down for too long. So this video just got kind of expensive uh, in the process of testing just now when you heard that loud kind of sound when the, when the eco flow finally kicked out. Uh, that was the sound of the wood catching on the miter saw and look at how nice and straight the guide is now. So tell me in the comments, what should I do now with my miter saw? How do I fix this problem? Do I replace these back guide pieces or do I just try to bend them back? It seems like they're really stiff. Uh, I guess I got that one to come back a little bit. So a couple other thoughts on this thing. Uh, reasons why you might want to consider having one. Uh, obviously number one is you have some portable power that's really easy to set up and turn on. It's ready to go. You just you don't have to mess around with getting a gasoline for your generator or anything like that. So that's the first reason why uh, it's kind of just handy to have one of these things around. Another reason why it might be a great investment to have one of these is that it works great in conjunction with a gas generator. And the reason for that is these things go from 0% to 80% charged in just one hour. And so if you are going to be running a gas generator but you don't want to have to run it 24 hours a day, then if you have a couple of these things around, you can charge these things up while your generator is running and then shut your generator off and use these things for all of your essential things that you need to do uh, while the generator is turned off. You can even power refrigerators with these things uh, for several hours. I will put links to these guys down in the description as well as a coupon code for you guys to use. Uh, EcoFlow did send these over and I really appreciate that a whole bunch. I had already been looking into purchasing some of these power banks. I actually have one other power bank already. Uh, but these things are very robust and with the ability to expand it and be able to get some pretty decent runtime on certain appliances with it, I really think it's a good option for you guys. So check out the links in the description. Also, if you guys have experience with these power banks, I would love to hear what your favorite brands are. I know that there's a bunch of different versions and options out there. From the research that I did, these are actually pretty fantastic units for the money and also for the size that they actually take up. Uh, pretty significant output and uh, runtime for the package that you're getting here. If you guys want to keep learning with me, I'll put a couple videos here on the screen. And so we'll see you over there in just a few seconds. Make sure to check out the links on these in the description for pricing information as well as the coupon code. See, I have a camera. She thinks it looks cool anyway.